glorious. The two champions? Taka? Hall of Famer Kokichi, Hiroko, Kurumi? That's a wise counsel. They know what they're talking about. They said what we were all thinking, and they were absolutely glorious. Day, good people, on the fine day in the year of the Resolve Toon Link Day, Bravo Day of Anomaly, the Nomal Cars, Funeral Maze, the man who is the United States Aviator. And yesterday was the United States Day, Independence Day. So we're gonna have a little bit of a celebration of the red, white, and blue today in the Don Gon Rampa Hunger Games. So get ready, kick back, relax. Some, I mean, a lot of people had yesterday off. I don't think anyone has today off, but like, you know, it's gonna be a fantastic time. And it's gonna be a, a great time. I have a lot of notes from Sunday V2. I guess we usually start with those news things now, don't we? Uh, tonight is Inferno. Um, and it is actually Sunday V's first Inferno, so I guess cut him some slack. Uh, hopefully nothing. Weird goes down on his first day and it's relatively quiet. Um, although I am a jinx, so hopefully I should have just not said anything. Um, we'll make these announcements. <laughs> it is officially July. We are really close to AV Mania 3. And Sunday V is beginning to realize that, realizing that there are people in ladder matches and people that need to get into ladder matches for the AWE Championship. Right now, Saika holds on to that title. But I digress. So tonight, we will learn two more people who will be going on to the AWE Championship matches at AV Mania 3. Uh, and it is... Two... Five person elimination matches. The chaos will ensue, but the last person standing will be given the option to climb a ladder, ascend, and try to reclaim the AWE Championship at AV Mania 3. That being said, that's not all that's going on tonight. Sunday V has also been going through and looking for all sorts of who's and what's not, who wants to get on the card, who wants to fight. And so a pair of doctors look to get their hands on one another. And it is two doctors who you're gonna have a hard time choosing who to root for. It is Dottore versus Sho Tucker. Two fiends, one result. Who will come out on top? at that juncture. And lastly, we are going to have a tag team match. It will be two on two action as pictured there. The winning two will actually have a tables championship opportunity as at Fracture, AJ Styles will defend that championship in a triple threat match. Inferno will be going strong tonight, so get ready for it, get excited for it, it's gonna be a good time, but there's, there's, there's still a lot of, a lot of things that we need to do regardless here, let's introduce all the people for the actual episode, no, no, <laughs> for the actual episode of the Don Rapa Hunger Games, we are starting off with Don Rapa 1, we're looking at people who are wearing red, white, and blue, have some sort of red, white, and blue, like, you know, Firm accessory, and for people who like, because you know, a lot of people just have like white in their clothing, it has to be like majority white clothing or like highlight of white or just white hair. Let's start at the top. We have Makoto, got some lovely red shoes, uh, Hina, Celeste, Junko, Taka, and Leon with that white attire, just like the, the shirts, the jackets, whatever uniform Taka's wearing, pristine. Uh, Sakura, no explanation needed, and a freaking Saika. As we go on to Danganronpa 2, we have Hajime, Akane, Fat Togami, all sporting white attire. Uh, pr predominantly white attire, rather. Fuiko is not, should not really be here, but he is now sporting the AWE Championship. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The Danganronpa Hunger Games Champion of Champions title, which, very decked out in red, white, and blue. Abuki's here, as well as a Mahiru sporting that big old red hair. Uh... 
as well as Nagito, Nakamaru, Peko, Sonya, Teru Teru, and Izuru as we scroll down. We have Danganronpa 3, who are a little light, as they have Komaru, Nagisa, Haiji, Hiroko, Taichi, and Yuta. As we go into District 4, we have Angie, Himiko, Kibo, Karumi, Kokichi, uh, Maki, Rantaro, Ryoma, Tenko, and the Moogster, Samuki. District 5 sees Chisa, Great Gozu, Tengen, Kizakura, Munakata, Ruka, Seiko, Izioi, and Maya. And lastly, District 6 sees Monokuma, Usami, Monadam, Monokid, Monophony, Monosuke, and Monotaro. And Shirakuma, who is, well, pretty much all my aunt. Are you ready? Because I, I I suppose I have to be ready because the game's about to start. If I wasn't ready, that would be a real issue. But um, there is one more thing that we should probably do. Um, you know, before we really settle down and say, hey, this, team, this episode is about to be going on because it could be for the title. Masaru could be in this episode as well. Fuiko could have a very, very short title reign. But the odds are relatively in his favor. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. Let's see if chaos will reign. No. Well, no. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, no, no shot. There's there's just no shot. Uh, it was a 5%. We didn't have to dilly and dally. We didn't have to belabor on the point. If we go, definitely order remains today. Not a prediction. It's the truth. It's right there in front of you. <laughs> Happy face Fuyuko keeps that title, the baby face gangster continues, goes forth. That being said, make those comments first, second, third, last time. I asked you guys about pets, huh? and y'all had a lot of pet answers, huh? and I'm here to, to talk about them because pet answers, because you know, I, we love the pets. We're little homies, huh? little babies. Huh? Uh, as we, and I also ask you if you don't have one, which one would be your ideal pet? Um, or if you have one, what still would be your ideal pet? With opening up, uh, uh, technically I have a pet cat, but my sister has him as a pet. Uh, if I had any pet, I think I would honestly be a parrot. A parrot, I think, would be fun. That is pretty cool. Uh, apples to keep tie away. Also, well, the doctors did, unfortunately. Um, we don't talk about that part of last episode. We, we don't, we don't lie, we don't talk about that. Thunder. Who says, yeah, I'd want a fur and look at his profile picture. Uh, but we have a cat, technically my sister's, uh, but we like all take care of him. Uh, his name is Oscar. Shout out to Oscar. That's a W for Oscar. Uh, Anthony Sub. War Games has officially begun. We also need uh, Weed Man to get the plant vision. That is true. I'm sorry. Of course Weed Man gets the plant vision. And of course Usami uses that tank first because she is combat ready Usami. Um, Kotoko also uh, sharing that that song that I was talking about very briefly. Um, the the, the Barbara uh, Rhubar Pie song. At the bar. <laughs> It's a fun, it's a fun song. Sincerely, you're a German fan. Thank you, Katoka. <laughs> as soon as I clicked the glass, I was like, yep, that's the one. <laughs> Matthew Glover pets an outdoor cat. That's, you know what? I was going to say that's kind of wild, but we kind of have an outdoor cat in the neighborhood. An indoor cat and an outdoor dog. Um, wait, did I actually pick, uh, predict first correctly? You did. You said Dottori for first, and technically, that's the correct answer. Via zombie shenanigans. Kuzu. Uh, as for pets, I have two cats. Huh? One black cat who I named after Pinto, shouts out to Pinto, uh, and one a white cat named Oddball, which I think is a fun name. Um, Jags fan, who says, I can't wait for Cherry to find out about this one, and I'm not going to look at the reply. I know what is there, and I will not refresh myself. <laughs> um, yes, we have two cats, used to have three, but one died, rest in peace, hopefully, I'm sure it had a fantastic life. Low key though, Fox always wanted one. Uh, I had wanted to have a bunch of animals as pets, from foxes to ferrets to chipmunks to squirrels, and even bats at one point, but nowadays I'm fine with cats, though I've always wanted a tortoise. I uh, used to have a bearded dragon when I was very young. Bearded dragons are actually really dope. Uh, dragon forces are regarding pets. Uh, for 15 years, I had a uh, pit, Sherman, uh, pit shepherd mix for a dog I named Eddie. Um, and I loved this because you were like obsessed with Ed and Eddie. I loved Ed and Eddie. <laughs> I still occasionally make references to Ed and Eddie. I called my two friends the Ed Boys. Neither one of them are named Ed. <laughs> Neither of them are Ed's. Um, I digress, though. Um, he was on the old side for dogs and was starting to have problems that we couldn't solve, but, you know. I lived, lived a good life. 15 years, which is wild. That is wild for a dog. Uh, this did, however, give uh, way to the dog I currently have, a near all-black pit bull uh, named Scorpio, which is a dope name. Um... The story behind that is when my mother and stepfather went up state 
uh, to pick up a new dog. The radio kept playing songs reminded uh, my mother of her, of her mother, who passed, who also had an all-black dog named Scorpio. And when my mom was super young, Scorpio I have is adorable. Uh, rather hyper at times, but much more sociable than Eddie, though. Uh, you know what? Shout out to Scorpio, too. I love hearing about all the pets. Huh? That's also a really interesting pet story. Um, Cat, who says... Uh, question of the day about pets. We have a family dog that belongs to my mother, technically. A hamster that technically belongs to my sister. Some fish, two guinea pigs, a whole house of, of uh, little pets. Um, one belonging to my sister, another shared by the family. I don't have an ideal pet because I'm not the most responsible person. Fair enough. Well, you know, one of these days, you might be. Uh, let me see. Let me see. <laughs> I, I also love going down to see a lot of people saying dot 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 good job Dottore. <laughs> nobody, that, I won't say nobody was happy with that, some people were. Um, Sonic Gaming, uh, rip Trevor, AV's pet spider in the corner. Love him to bits. Uh, I have one dog, uh, since the rest are gone, but he's an idiot, he barks at everything and <laughs> everyone always tries to, uh, uh, tr touch new people with his claws and constantly wants to go outside. He is very young if that matters. It does matter a lot. Uh, he'll probably grow out of a lot of it. <laughs> uh, let me see. He's just hyper. He's just he's just excited to be here. <laughs> excited to learn all about the world. Oh, man. Um, also, for your last episode, you hate snakes. But leeches... Ooh, yeah, no. I didn't think about leeches for last week's episode. For an animal, you're just like, no, absolutely not. Leeches, a hundred percent, might be up there, up there for me. I, I would not. <laughs> Big L on that. Um, my most recent pet was a guinea pig who died in uh, January of last year. You hate to hear that. I've had many pets over the years, though, such as dogs, hermit crabs, which is a, a fun pet. Uh, lizards, fish, hamsters. This is Lady Psyche, by the way. And parakeets. I think my aunt had two parakeets. So my great aunt, actually. Um, I would like to get a pet snake one day, but it's unlikely since my mom hates snakes and won't let me keep one. Uh, it's more likely that I will eventually get more guinea pigs. Hey, one of these days you might get a snake. Who knows? Um, and those are the comments from last time. I thought that that was, uh... A really fun learning about all the pets episode. Uh, or rather, comments. I like reading those. I like reading those a lot. Um... And it's also just fun to see uh, like similar answers. Let me let me let me give a let me give a shot. I'm trying to think. We talked about X. We talked about Y. We talked about Z. I'm trying to think about what's on my mind. Do you have I talked about musical instruments? I feel like we must have. Maybe we just kind of mention it sometimes. Do you play? No, I must have. We must have. But if we didn't, I uh, um, um, might as well ask now. Do you play any musical instruments, or rather, have you played any musical instruments? Um, if you, what's your favorite instrument, uh, just in terms of sound? And if you could play any instrument, what instrument would you play? Um, make, give me those, and then first, second, and third, I'll answer that. Uh, I've played uh, trombone. I kind of play ukulele. Um, but I legitimately played trombone for a long time. I think I've told the story of being the lone trombone for a while. Um, of being like the only trombone in, in a, a small band. Uh, because everyone else was playing other instruments, which is uh, what you do. <laughs> um, and the other two trombone players graduated. Um, that was in high school. I'm trying to think of... If I could play, what's my favorite instrument via sound? I really like, like, harps and lutes. If I could play any instrument, I think I would like to learn how to play the lute, to be honest. Like, the... I would like to <laughs> to play the lute, and I'd like to play, like, a meme song, like, just meme songs on the lute. Ah! <laughs> Hello, traveler! <laughs> could I play you a melody? <laughs> doom, doom. <laughs> and disturb Rick rolling people with a loot, I think would be hilarious. So that is gonna be my pick. And you know what? Loots aren't that expensive, so that might be a reality one day. <laughs> or at least a starter loot's not expensive. Those are my picks. I'm gonna pick first, second, third. Uh, give me the champion for first. I think he's gonna pull out a secret, uh, not a secret achievement. I do, we do have to watch out for secret achievements. Uh, I think he's gonna pull out a fan vote, though, a W. Uh, for second, I'll take Kibo. And for third, I'll take... Uh, 
Akane. I feel like I gotta pick two people from Don Rapa 2 because they always tend to do very well. That's the start of this episode. Let's kick it off. And the best way to go about that is to. As. As near. Well. <sighs> you did right by bringing this here today. It is United States Day, so I must have the United States Championship around my arm. I'll never kiss you again, European. That being said, let's roll this how many times, Asner? We'll be re simulating. We got. Ooh, that's one. That's not good. Oh, that's all of my secret achievements. They fall into the ground. Huh. There we go. We don't have to do anything fancy this time because it is just one re simulation. I got that out uh, just in case. Oh, no. Does that mean my pen is also falling down? Oh, no, it does. Ah. Uh... There we go. It was like, like at the like the edge of the the desk leg. So I was like, oh man, I'm never gonna be able to like wedge that out. But it was actually pretty easy. Recently, I just once, and there it is. I was gonna say, it was one time. I actually am gonna put this. I'd like to have it in shot, but I also don't want my arms to be restricted. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, this sounds terrible, actually. I can hear myself, and I hate that. Um... Oh, uh, you know what? We'll deal with it. What if we do something like... Yeah, I still hate... Yeah, uh, it's too late. I've already committed. Uh, let's go ahead and proceed. It is the bloodbath. The tributes are on their podiums. The horns, they dot sound. Horn bearers... Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for doing what you do best, Horn Bears. I've quit. <laughs> I've quit. It's in my lab. Maybe it'll show up a couple more times this episode, but for right now, we are just proceeding. Terra Terra runs away from the cornucopia, as does Monadam Nagito approaches Maya, Nagisa, and Munakata tells him that he'll be killing them all this game. Uh, Celeste decides to lend Mia that squad, that squad love right there. Uh, ripping a, I'm sorry, killing, Komodo, uh, killing a Komodo dragon that's loose in the arena. Abuki rips a mace out of Kang Ryoma's hands. Himiko snatches a bottle of alcohol and a rag. Tengen runs away from the cornucopia. Seiko realizing that dying doesn't mean anything in this endless cycle of despair, so she's gonna live it up this game. Junko and Kizakura compare the knives that they found. Kokichi comes with a spoon, he gets laughed at. Haha! -ha. Or maybe he's gonna scoop some eyes out. Akane runs away from the cornucopia. Thankfully did not call a congregation of alligators, otherwise this episode would have been over. Makoto refuses to fall into despair. There's been no KO so far as Izzy always takes a sickle from beside the cornucopia. Murakata is uh, probably lower down. Monokuma, however, runs away from the cornucopia as Ruka and backed by unpopular demand Shirakuma. Boo! Got him. Uh, Sakura also realizing that dying doesn't mean anything and she says, I'm gonna live it up this game. Uh, Fuiko finds a huge rocket launcher. Monika takes a shuckle, a shuckle from inside of the cornucopia. Uh... Monotaro was spacing out during the dice roll, wonders if it landed on a 1. Mahiru finds a Takumoto dragon uh, in the cornucopia. The reptile says uh, that she is Maki. Asner has placed a curse on her, the only way for that curse to be broken is for Mahiru to kiss her. Mahiru reluctantly obliges kissing Maki, turning her back normal. Unfortunately for Mahiru, the kiss was Venom, but... Uh, surprisingly, it's late in this round, but it is still... <laughs> er I guess early enough in the KOs for one certain thing to happen, and that one certain thing is Mahiru joining the Retribution Rumble. Miss Mahiru, more power to ya. But that is really still just the start of this episode. It is, it's, it's, it, I don't know why. It feels like it's going to be a long one, but you know, we could have an arena event and that could all just go down the hill. Um, same thing happens with Peko and Yuta, except Peko is the one who is poisoned or venomized. Uh, Azuru and Kibo try and find a way to escape. Leon begs for one of the weapons that Takas picked up. He kills Leon with one in response. Okay, that escalated. Usami and Komaru make a secret pact to work together. 
that's combat ready, Usami. You better run. Uh, Monosuke runs away from the cornucopia as does Sonya. Tinko finds Samugi's corpse from a previous game in the cornucopia. Samugi's not shocked by this discovery. She's like, um, it happens. Kurumi grabs a chainsaw. Rantaro sees a live landmine stashed away in the supplies. He tries to avoid, but Saika comes charging in, tackles them into the mine, blowing them both up. All right, well, it's becoming a little bit less, uh, a little bit less <laughs> violent. Um... Or I guess less non-violent. Hajime finds an ocarina, wants to play it. Rantaro wanted to kill him for it, but he literally just blew up. Uh, Chisa <laughs> runs away from the cornucopia as does Gozu. Uh, Hiroko enters the arena via skydiving, and Hina scares Angie away from the cornucopia. Um, Nakamaru finds Fatogami hiding in the cornucopia and kills him. Taichi smashes the Haiji across the face with a brick, but Haiji shrugs off the blow, and Monophony runs away from the cornucopia. We are down, or I guess we are continuing to day one. Well, let me turn pages real quick. Yeah, I gotta keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Uh, as Tinko wants to be a stepping for everyone, uh, Monotaro sits down next to Tinko has a talk with her. Uh, Haiji just throws a discarded dumbbell onto Himiko's head. That's unfortunate. Yuta and Sonya sitting in a tree. K-I-L-L-I-N-G. My of the month employee. <laughs> what a kind of gets in his, his hand stuck in a can of Pringles. Uh, Shirakuma gets his ultimate talents license revoked. He doesn't have an ultimate talent. He doesn't even have talent. Now I can tell. I don't know where my beef is with Shirakuma coming from, but you know what? I'll continue. Nagito and Taka track down and kill Taichi. Ko Ko <laughs> Kokichi, rather, uh, pushes Monophony off the cliff during a knife fight. Hiroko sets up an ice cream shack. Nobody comes. Makoto gets his hand also stuck in a can of Pringles. Um, there's just a bunch of people with big old tubes on their hands. Um, Izioi takes a sip of scalding hot tea, but the liquid proves too much for him, spits out in Izuru's face. Ibuki wonders what events are canon to the Dawn of Hunger Games lore. We are all gathered and back to... We all gathered here to remember our dear comrade. In honor of her sacrifice, all events should halt for half a day as the nation mourns her passing. Well, Sakura does Sakura things. Monokit puts cat ears on Monodame. He's very embarrassed about all of this. Samugi has drip, but Celeste is the director of drip. She does. Uh, uh, Celeste is dripped out, I will admit. Uh, Monokuma works for both Avis and Yoko's because he is an extreme debt. Komaru cleans her kitchen with a new kitchen gun. Gozu almost falls off a cliff, but is able to earthbend his way to safety. Hina and Fuiko can see the horizon. Hatsune Mikyu! <laughs> Goodness gracious. Uh, Maki buys AV merchandise from AV's wares and despairs. Chisa receives a first aid kit from the comment section. Uh, Kibo makes a deal with Usami or no deal. Listen here, Monosuke doesn't like Junko. He's gonna bark at her now. Seiko asks Kizakura if everything's okay. Kurumi makes a life-size cardboard cutout of freaking Saika just to spite me. Kurumi, I thought we were cool. Ruka is tied down to a table and forced to listen to Akane's monologue about herself. Ruka dies from boredom. Uh, Nakamaru hates how he acted in the past, wants to do better. Wants to move past this phase of his life, become a better person. Hajime does a cool skateboarding trick to amuse Ryoma. Uh, Tengen throws the sand in the eyes of Angie, runs off. And Teru Teru wants Avi to give Saika a chance. I disapprove and disqualify Teru Teru for it. How could you want me to do such a thing? What's wrong with you? Get, do better. <laughs> do better. We've lost 13. One of them was Saika. And it's a Claire de Lune 4. Mahiru, Pekko, Leon, Rantaro, Saika, Fat Togami. Himiko, Nagisa, Taichi, Monophony, Maya, Ruruka, Teru Teru. Peek at everybody's statuses. We only lost 13. We do have a, not a massive episode today, but it's a larger episode than usual. Yeah, we still got 40 competitors left. 40. But I guess if you think of it like that and we'd lose another like 10, 10, and then 10, and then 10, and then we're pretty much done. Well, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> That being said, I'm not sure if that's how it's gonna go. We can, however, proceed to see if that is how it goes. Shall we do such a thing? I, I mean, we might as well. Let's go and give it a shot. We proceed on to the next round, and it starts off with night one, and that is... Tinko finds a lovely bikini and puts it on. It's quite revealing. This awakens something inside of Monosuke. Kurumi loves all V3 survivors equally. Maki, Himiko, and, um... Saki. Uh, Monotaro... 
She sings a romantic song to Kibo, how sweet Usami uses all of her monocle wings to bow at Eevee's words and spares for the day. Haiji runs into Hajime, falls over, barely conscious. Hajime's eyes stare at the fallen Haiji before doing the caterpillar and dropping an elbow right onto him. Naito sneaks into the back room of uh, Yoko's items and misfortunes, but unknowingly gets seen by Hiroko, an employee of the store, who locks the door behind him. Uh, Yuta hits a monocle with some sweet chin music. Angie is plagued by a recurring nightmare. Gozu dies of dysentery. Tragic. Samugi simps for table. Sakura does not understand why. Akane rests in her fruit tree. Monoku violently shakes that tree, but it also causes Akane to fall to her death. Seiko adopts Kokichi as her child. You sweet summer child, Seiko. You don't know what you've gotten yourself into. <laughs> Celeste and Taka. Uh, become the best of friends after bonding over their shared love of 17th century sea shanties. Uh, Ryoma dyes their green for some reason. Uh, your hair is barely visible. Makoto, Tengen, Ibuki, and Fuihiko all find a big red button. Makoto bashes that thing, you've doomed us all, but he is lucky, but also disappointed. Nakamaru kisses homies goodnight. Mwah. Uh, Izioi, Monadam, and Maki. Uh, Hina holds an insect meet and greet. Chisa, Shirakuma, and Munakata were unfortunately allergic to bees. That is tragedy. Kizakura fears Yuta, in fact he fears all the Asahinas, any chance that Junko and Sonya had a friendship is destroyed when they're forced to fight over the last slice of pizza, and Izuru submits an application, an application to join the squad, Komaru snatches it and rips it off, goodness gracious, that's bold too, to do it to Izuru, that's crazy. Bullying Usami, not cool Yuta, Junko breaks the fourth wall and compliments you in particular, viewer, Hina pimp slaps a Monokuma off of a cliff, Seiko Actually blurts out the fact that she likes uh, Ibuki in a non-platonic way. Ibuki declines the accidental confession, saying that she doesn't like her in that way. Hajime throws Makoto at Taka. Okay. Fuiko has balloons, Maki comes and pops them. Fuiko proceeds to kill Maki for destroying his balloons. They used to be a tag team together. Uh, I confused Tengen for Hilda? How? I'ma be real with you. That one's my bad. That's that's on me. I don't know how that happened. That's that one's my bad, y'all. I'm gonna take the L on that one. That's on me. <laughs> Monokid deliberately jumps off of a cliff. Tinko spins so fast she becomes a human Beyblade. Hiroko and Naito enter a rebuttal uh, showdown. Monodam's unknown sponsor is Asner with a third dimension. mention. Uh, Zuru starts writing a novel. Will he ever finish it? Uh, Kibo. Wants to be a stepping stone for everyone else. Komaru sits down next to Kibo, has a talk with him. Uh, Monotaro and Kurumi play tic tac toe on an image of Ryoma's forehead. Sumugi finds her maze of Viking ship. Uh, uh, Iz Izioi, still? Your, your hand? Izioi, you gotta get these Pringles, my guy. You gotta get these Pringles. <laughs> Come on, my dude. Um, Nekamaro and Sakura insult each other relentlessly after getting into a bloody fight. The big buff family is uh, really uh, throwing hands, apparently. Haiji also makes a life-size cardboard cutout of freaking Sakura to spite me. Okay, I'll remember that too. Alright, so one for Kurumi and one for Haiji. Neither of you are winning this game. If they're the final two, I'm gonna scream. <laughs> I'm gonna scream, Monosuke commits a crime, runs away giggling. Uh, Kokichi takes Kizakura to Suplex City. Uh, Andy is sick and tired of playing nice and turns heel, and Celeste tells a frustrated Sonya to chill out. We proceed again, another eight are gone, cannon shots are being heard in the distance, and they are four, this Clair de Lune four. Gozu, Akane, Chisa, Shirakuma, Munakata, M Monokuma, Maki, Monokid. The uh, trouble my brain just had reading Shirakuma Munakata Monokuma Maki Monokid was something. It's almost something of a tongue twister, I'll give you that. <laughs> that was just another 8 gone, I believe. That brings us down to 32. We were just at 40. Um, Close to a standard size game, not too large of a game. We still have most of Trigger Happy Havoc. We got Makoto, Hina, Junko, Celeste, Sakura, and Taka. District 2 sees Hajime, Fuiko, Ibuki, Nagito, Nakamaru, Sonya, and Azuru. District 3 still has uh, Komaru, Haiji, Hiroko, and Yuta. Um... V3 has just lost three. They are down to uh, Kibo, Kurumi, Kokichi, Sumugi, Tenko, Ryoma, and Angie. Uh, Donarpa 3 has Tengen, Kizakura. They are struggling, actually. Seiko and Izioi and the Bears are... And the Bears and the Rabbit, my bad. Are down to Usami, Monadam, Monosuke, Monotaro. And we proceed. What else will unfold is the real question. Who will come out on top is the real question. We will find out is the real answer. <laughs> Taka, who works for Yoko's... 
It's sick and tired of people from AVs burning it down, so he burns down AVs, wears, and despairs, alright? Taco's on my hit list, too. Perfect. Sony does her red, uh, which is great, actually. Ibuki is getting ready for AV Mania. I'll remember that, Ibuki. I'll talk to Sunday before you. Hajime, uh, Tengen and Celeste enter a scrum debate with Kokichi, Izioi, and Sakura over, uh, they argue, rather, over who the best Doki Doki Literature Club is. We've talked about this, right? I feel like it's Sayori, but if you're talking about, like, who's making the best name for themselves right now, it's Yuri. On this channel, it's Yuri. <laughs> Angie teases Monosuke and Hiroko how to use ice magic, Haiji sings Komaru a lullaby, and I gag. Monadam misses their planned meeting with Hina and now has a sad feeling in his chest. Samugi walks into a very strange machine. Her molecules get all rearranged, she gets ghost powers, Kibo, Kibo, uh, Kibo, Kibo yes, Queen. Uh, Seiko and Fuiko invite Monotaro, Yuta, Izuru, Ryoma, Junko, Nagito, Usami, and Kurumi to a party, a super kick party. Seiko and Fuiko hit everyone with sweet chin music one after another all through the night, but they all survive. Nekamaru submits an application to join the squad. But you're... Okay. Makoto helps mail the application. Yeah, Nekamaru, hey, you're in. <laughs> Thank you, Sakura. Charges his ultimate move in anyone else's hands, a microphone is a microphone, and Tenko's hands is a pipe bomb. I'm not sure if we lost anyone today. Huh. Day three, Tengen buys AV merchandise from AV's Wears and Despairs. Seiko puts on Shuichi's hat. He's not in this episode, but you know what? His hat is. Junko bashes Izuru's head against a rock several times. Kibo found the secret stash of pancakes that I had hypothetically hinted at. Monodam is tied down to a table and forced to listen to Ryoma's monologue about himself. Monodam dies of boredom. Ibuki hates how she acted in the past. Uh, disgusted by what she did in the past and wants to move past this phase of her life, become a better person. Sonya panders to the audience. Fuiko is theorizing how best to counter AV's jinx. Celeste throws sand in the eyes of Sakura, causing her to go temporarily blind for the rest of the game. She can't see, but does she need to see? Kokichi was being a clown. Tsumugi is a true romantic and gives Kizakura a rose. Kizakura slaps her. Well, technically, that's, uh, yeah. Technically correct. <laughs> Didn't, it, it, it was given. <laughs> so, admittedly, um, baby, I can pay you to a kiss from a rose on the grave. Uh, give a tribute a rose is actually a secret achievement, and it has been hit, and it belongs to Samugi. Good on her. I wasn't sure. I knew it was going to get hit eventually, but I was like, well, maybe yeah, maybe not today. <laughs> but it didn't indeed get hit, Samugi. Welcome to uh, the bracket. Can you also win, though? That's the real question. Uh, that's incorrect. This is. Uh, Kurumi. Performs the Norian tradition of making Monosuke clothing five minutes after they meet. Uh, Makoto forces Monotaro to kill Usami or Nagito. He decides to kill Makoto. That wasn't an option, but look at you. Hina finds the remains of a Viking ship. Nekomar wants to be a stepping stone for everyone. Izuru slurps his fresh applesauce. Nice. Um, I actually purchased some applesauce. And I was like, you know what? I think I want some. I, I was at the store. I was like, it's been a minute. I've talked about this. Uh, he's slurping it with one hand and has the hand, the can of Pringles still stuck on the other one. <laughs> Talk is so excited about his super weapon. Then will take over the arena here wrote a song about it. Pillars of lava shoot out of the ground as Yuta and Komaru duel to the dust. Komaru accidentally slips and falls to the ground as a pillar of lava erupts underneath her. And fun fact, Andy's is here specifically to suffer, and then Haiji, uh, Hajime, Tenko, and Hiroko have all become chibi forms of themselves uh, thanks to the mystical waters in a hidden lake deep beneath the arena. Magic doesn't always have to be useful, but it sure is cute. Unless there's an arena event, we have just lost, yeah, four. I was going to say it's a light round this round. We enter the 20s. But just barely after this Claire de Loom 4. Izuru, Monadam, Makoto, Komaru. And I believe that brings us to 28, if I remember correctly, if we did have 32 last time, and I'm pretty sure we did. Uh, alive, and DB are at 28, 4 more into your standard size game. Uh, we only lost 4 that round, I don't think we really need to recap too much of what's going on, we'll just do a little slow scroll. You know who your picks are, you know if they're still in here, and if they are, good on you. If they're not, bad on you. <laughs> Um, I think two, my picks for first and second are still in, Kibo and, um, Fuiko, not in that order. Um, Akane's gone, but hey, if my top two still make it, I'll be alright. Uh, this is the part where they both die, and I scream to the heavens. <laughs> Tengen and Tsumugi, the rest of this event is not welcome to a school environment, and Hagito adopts Izioi as a ch uh, his child, rather. Okay. Um, he's, he's older than you, right? 
okay, whatever. Andy sets up an outdoor generator, space heater, and floodlights. Monotaro pays Seiko 500 monocle, uh, 500 monocle and rather to kill him medieval style via the rats. Hina works for both Yoko's and Abe's because she is an extreme debt. Tinko tracks down and kills Sonya. Kizakura loves Haiji as much as Maki loves Kokichi, and you know, that's, uh, Yuta taints Abuki's food, killing her. Yuta's kind of having a game, huh? A classic Yuta style game. Usami eats a sandwich to fully restore her health. Hajime prays to a two that he makes it out of here with minimal bloodshed, of course. Junko and Nekomaru become the best of friends as well after their shared love of 17th century sea shanties. Kibo acts in. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry cute. Too. He acts delightful. Oh. Sakura, Fuihiko, and Taka enter a scrum debate with Kokichi, Hiroko, and Karumi. They actually don't argue and simply agree that Gentleman Thomas sucks. Yeah, I'm gonna give that one a... Uh, glorious! The two champions? Taka? Hall of Famer Kokichi? Hiroko? Kurumi? That's a wise council. They know what they're talking about. They said what we were all thinking, and they were absolutely... Glorious! I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let it fester for a second, everyone drink it all in, drink it all in. Did you know, do you agree with them? If you do, you're correct. If you don't, you're XSP. Yeah, alright. I think that's, uh, I think that's enough. <laughs> we almost stop being selfish. Monoskin gets bonked on the head, and in the dead of night, Celeste ducks and dodges the laser, def laser defense system, managed to escape the arena, James Bond style, impressive, but she is disqualified. We la ha, there's another day. <laughs> I thought we were at the day already. Day 4 is a zoo is a yoy. Stabs Yuta with a sword, revives him over and over again with a wish ring or a piece of process until the wish ring burns their hand, Yuta runs off. Kina ambushes and kills Ki Kibo. Oh, well that's one of my picks, but hey, maybe the other one won't. Uh, perish. Hiroko asks Kurumi if Kurumi likes boats, leading Kurumi to go on a tirade about how much she loves boats. Hiroko dies from boredom. Kizakura, Anji, Sakura, and Kokichi, and Tengen to look for more people to kill. Tak is getting tired of playing nice and turns heel. Um, Kiondo. Uh, Nekomaru is not funny, has never been funny, never will be funny on a scale of 1 to 10. How much do you like Hajime? Um. I don't know. 8? I think 8. I think a Hajime is one of my favorites. I think. I think out of the protagonist, well. He ranks high. I think he might be my second favorite of the protagonist. The rating pistol rates Usami 13 points. AV on a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you like Samugi? Okay, so hear me out. <laughs> If this is Dong on Rampa Samugi, uh, I gotta, she would, she would get rated kind of low. If this were AWE Samugi, uh, she's rated kind of high. I think for like AWE Samugi, she's probably like an eight, eight and a half. For Dong Rampa Samugi, Samugi, she's probably like a, um, I don't know, she's probably like a six, to be honest. Um... But also, that's some personal beef that I have with Samugi. Remember, gets so absorbed in chasing a butterfly, he falls in right off of a cliff. Uh, Monosuke has drip, but Junko's the director of drip. She got promoted. Uh, before, she just had drip, and now she's the new director. Tinko shoulder charges a tree, knocking it over, crushing a Haiji and Fuiko. And it's this, uh, as if I said earlier, man, I'm okay. Both of my picks are still, two of my picks are still in, and, and they are not. Uh, Seiko. Accidentally blurts the fact out that she likes Nagito in a non-platonic way, accepts a confession, and they are... They, they, they smooch a little bit, I guess. We lost another 9. That brings us within uh, under 20, actually. Because we had 28? We're at 19. The final 19, 9 more. Another day like this, and we would enter Saving Grace Picks territory, but for right now, it's a Clarity Loom 4. Monotaro, Sonya, Abuki, Celeste, Kibo, Hiroko, Ryoma, Haiji, Fuihiko. Well, Fuyuko will not get you guys the the van bow, but I guess Samugi could. Samugi could, technically. Uh, for Donrapa 1 now, we have Hina, Junko, Taka, and Sakura. Donrapa 2, we're down to 3. It's Hajime, Nagito, and Nekamaru. District 3 sees just Yuta all alone. Uh, but that doesn't surprise me, because if anyone was going to make it from its district, it was going to be him. District 4 sees Angie, Kurumi, Kokichi, Tinko, and the Moogster. District 5 sees Tengen, Kizakura, Seiko, Izioi, the four of them. And just two left in terms of the bears and the bear and the bunny. We have the bunny Usami, we have the Mana Cub, Manasuke.
as your final 19, who's gonna come up clutch? Who's gonna take that W? Nine more into your saving race specs. Will we even get there this round? It's a strong possibility that we, we don't, to be honest. But we might because they have become a little bit violent to the start of this as Hajime kills Junko with a hatchet. She is dead. I, I, we all believe in our Junkos, but not today. Angie, Kokichi, and Kizakura all have s'mores around the campfire. Uh, Sakura challenges AV and Battleship. Sakura, could you beat me in a fight? Oh, easily, without a uh, no shadow of a doubt. But I'm gonna sink that Battleship. Hey, <laughs> you're doomed. I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna say, D12, my Battleship! Yeah. It's okay, Sakura, you did all right. Uh, but you don't step to me in Battleship. Nayuto grabs a dumbbell, starts working out. Karumi, Hina, and Tengen enter a scrum debate with Seiko. Taka and Izioi argue over who should be the, uh, who should be champion in the event of a tie. Nekamaro, feeling especially kind of nice, gives Samugi, rather, a muffin. Usami puts her trust in Yuta and allows herself to fall backwards. Yuta catches her. Usami says to Yuta that she trusts Yuta with her life. And Manasuke and Tinko have a pose off. Tinko wins. We are on to the next day as Hina kills Kizakura with his own weapon. His hat. I <laughs> Jin, Karumi, and Samugi uh, corner Sakura and about to kill her when she pulls out a grappling hook and uses it to escape. Nagito receives pancakes from Avi. Cheers, my buddy. Uh, Manasuke goes nya nya to Ino and Taka. Uh, Hajime seems to be dead, but it's a lie. It just ain't the truth. Uh, Kokichi freaks out completely upon seeing a painting of dogs. They're playing poker. How is this possible? Uh, Izio wants Avi to give Waffles a chance, and I want you gone. Uh, Yuta <laughs> plays chess with death. He loses the game and thus loses his life. Seiko and Tenko work together to toss Tengen's items into lava. Usami catches Nekamaru off guard and kills him at the end of this round. We are down another four. We are at your final 15. Five more into your saving grace picks for right now. It's a clear day of the four. Junko Kizakura. Yuta, Nakamaru. And with that, uh, Danganronpa Ultra Spare Girls is out. Uh, we are at your final 15, and most notably, we are within feast range, so things may uh, speed up a scotch. <laughs> Um, we only lost the four, and I think the big news here is that we do have a district now completely out, uh, and district five is down to just three. V3's doing real good, but for all we know, they could all get eliminated back to back to back in the feast. Uh, will that happen? Uh, I'll see if my jinx is incredible. Uh, Izioi works for both Avis and Yokos. There's a lot of people who are working at both stores. Seiko, Sumugi, Tengen, Kurumi, Nagito, and Hina in terms from debate. Arguing which of them will make it the farthest in this game? I would like to hear, actually. <laughs> Between these six, who do you think is gonna make it the farthest in this game? I think that's a really fun event. Uh, put it in the comments, who do you think between those six is gonna make it the furthest in this game? If I had to pick, I think it's gonna be Karumi, uh, mainly because I said earlier you're on my list, which means you're probably going to make it far and I'm going to scream. Uh, Usami befriends a Komodo dragon wearing a small pair of aviator goggles. Manasuke and Kokichi steal Andy's weapons while she's asleep. Uh, Tenko gets hold of my soundboard, unfortunately, before she can use it, gets caught by Avi and disqualified. Give me that back. Hajime somehow magically teleports himself to the elusive 13th month, D September. This ends up being the end of them as the gods do not recognize this as an actual month. Uh, Taku, who works at both the Yoko's, uh, who works at Yoko's rather, is tired of all the people from Avi's burning it down, so he burns down Avi's again! Unfortunately, second time, fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice, I'm sending the squad after you, you're dead. <laughs> Sakura gets hold of my soundboard, within the hour gets struck by a bolt of lightning for playing copyrighted music, and uh, okay, we're probably at the feast. Indeed we are. The feast. The cornucopia is replenished with food, weapons, and memoirs from the tribute's families. Uh, Samugi pushes Hina off of a cliff during a night fight. Izioi gathers as much food as he can before fleeing. Monosuke decides not to attend the feast. Nagito kills Kurumi as she tries to run. Kokichi ambushes Tengen and kills him. Usami bashes Seiko's head against a rock, a rock several times. And Angie is killed by player one. That was an incredibly bloody feast. And I do kind of want to go back to this night. Uh, I think... Uh, Samugi's alive. I know you two are gone. Nagito lived because he killed Karumi. Um, so it is Nagito, Samugi, and Seiko died too, right? Yeah, it's just Nagito and Karumi from the <laughs> from that. And I'm sorry, Nagito and Samugi from that other group, which is interesting. Uh, if you pick one of them, you might go all the way with that group. Let's see how it goes as we proceed again. It is 
day six. Uh, and Nagito made it the furthest because Izzy always sprains his ankle while running away from Monosuke. Sumugi seems to be alive, but it's alive, so she is not alive. Kokichi slurps that applesauce, how nice. A uh, monocoma unit corners Usami and mauls her, and Nagito receives fresh food from a serious man dressed as a wizard. We are down, I think, to four. Sure are, we had 11 gone. Goodness gracious, it's a clear day loon four. Tenko, Hajime. Taka, Sakura. Hina, Kurumi. Tengen, Seiko. Angie, Samugi, Usami. It's kind of wild that <laughs> during the night we had this argument over which of the six would make it the farthest. And only one of the six have made it through to the next Fallen Tributes. I think that's funny. I think that... Pardon me, I think that's neat, and I think it's time for you guys to make some new picks, and I'll I'll even let you call them something special. They're your Saving Grace Picks. First and foremost, it is your final four. Two former tag team partners, uh Izioi and Monosuke. To talk first about the bottom two, we have Monosuke. Here comes the money, here comes the money, and it's money in the bank this weekend, so maybe, just maybe, Monosuke is feeling the power of the money. <laughs> we'll wait and see. Izioi, his claim to fame, uh, he knows what he can do. He is a secret power player, he has co-championed a title before, he has been tag team champion before. Let's see what he's able to do right here, right now. Then we move up. To two people, Nagito, Kokichi. What more can I say about these two? Nagito and Kokichi have had history together in these games. They have made it to the final two together in these games. They have taken out each other in the final two in these games. Will they make it to the final two again? Will it be Nagito versus Kokichi? It's your final four. Make your picks first, second, third. I will make mine as well. Give me Kokichi for first, Nagito for second, and Monosuke for third. It's easy peasy, just like that. I think our final two will be those two. Unfortunately, that also means with my jinx, it might be those two get out next. <laughs> but those are my picks. It is your final four. Once again, it is Monosuke, it is Izioi, it is Kokichi, it is Nagito. You made your picks. I made mine. And they are all cotton we would like to call within our final four a crisis. A fate. Let's do this. Final four. Izioi, Monosuke, Kokichi, Nagito. Seize! Oh, everyone lives. As Kokichi, Nagito, and Monosuke find the Triforce, they each take a piece for themselves. Kokichi now has the Triforce of Courage, Nagito, Wisdom, and Monosuke, the Triforce of Power. And Izioi never wants to hear Megalovania ever again. Nagito stabs Monosuke in the back with a trident. Kokichi finds a yeet ball, and Izioi finds a bikini and puts it on his quite revealing. Wait, this is the wrong simulator. Oh well. We just lost the one, so a very quick, terrible turnabout. Four. Monosuke. It's your final three now, and we know who they are. It is Kokichi, it is a Nagito, and it is- it's- oh. Well, I mean, it's still a final three. We didn't need to do anything. Nobody died here, so I don't feel all that bad. <laughs> Izioi, Nagito, and Kokichi is Izioi and Nagito hold hands. Kokichi receives spaghetti from an unknown sponsor. Uh... It's not over yet. As in an amazing feat of strength, Izioi crushes Nagito with a boulder, Kokichi screams his former tag team partner's name in anguish, but I'm sure Izioi is only just looking at him with those, with those serious eyes saying, You're next. Another and one last terrible turnabout for... Nagito. Okay, but for real this time, we'll see everybody's statuses because I have to ask you a very important question. It is down to just two, Kokichi and Izioi. The man who I did not pick and the man who I, I, I did pick. <laughs> so, between those two, Kokichi, Izioi, who is it gonna be? Izioi, Kokichi. 
The world always says you never bet against Kokichi. It's the final two. It's the Hunger Games. It's his show. The first ever Hunger Games champion. He is that guy. Hall of Famer, he is that guy. Accolades out the wazoo, he is that guy. Tag Team Championships out the wazoo, he is that guy. But standing in his way is a very hungry Izioi. Izioi, he's not that guy, but he is our boy. That's our boy Izioi versus that guy Kokichi. It is a 1v1 battle and only one or both or none are gonna come out of it so in the chat no, in the comments, let me know. Izioi, Kokichi. Both? Neither. Kokichi? Izioi. Izioi, Kokichi. Shall we find out? We got ourselves a stream later. I'm not gonna hold you for too long because the truth of the matter is... Izioi breaks Minecraft rule number one and digs straight down. Instead of finding lava, I'm sorry, instead of finding diamonds, he plummets into lava. And that is why, when you're hedging your bets, there is a certainty in the Hunger Games. And he is your winner. It was our boy versus that guy. And that guy proves why he is that guy. Again, your winner, the one and only, the Hall of Famer, the man, the myth, the legend, Kokichi Oma takes the win. And that's all she wrote. <laughs> that's all I can say. What can I say except you're welcome, and that you don't bet against Kokichi. You never bet against that man. It's the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. We proceed one more again. Kokichi. That's the winner. He's, he's the man. He, he has done it. What can I, well, once again, what else can I say? He's just... Uh, he is him. He is that guy. In the Hunger Games, the final two, you look off and you're like, if they're not ready to beat Kokichi, he's not gonna let them beat him. Izioi in second, Nagito third, Monosuke fourth, uh, Usami fifth, Sumugi sixth, Angie seventh, Seiko eighth, Tengen ninth, and rounding off your top ten is Karumi. That is our game, and we'll do a slow scroll through everyone else as we go ahead and peek at, uh, don't say the bracket yet, we're gonna keep scrolling down real quick. Now, we can say go and check out that bracket. Kokichi Oma. Never bet against him. And of course, Samugi claiming clutching a secret achievement. We see two V3 characters look to invade this bracket. There's a lot more secret achievements left. I do believe a fair chunk of them will still hit, but I will probably get a couple of fan votes off of this. We'll see how it all plays out until, I guess, next week. Until next Friday when we're in Ortiel action. Um, it all started off with the poison kiss, so Maki went on to that Retribution Rumble. And, I'm sorry... My hero went on to that Retribution Rumble, not my, not Maki. <laughs> it all ended with Izioi digging straight down and Kokichi saying, Championship, here I come. We'll proceed one more again. And that leaves us with the KOs. Hina had six KOs because you never, uh, admittedly, she's a terrifying force. And right below her, Yuta. It's always the Asahinas on top, even when they don't win. Nagito had three, Tenko had three, Kokichi with two, Taka with two, Usami with two, everyone else with one or none. That is the story of the KOs, but the story of the game is Kokichi takes the W once again. We'll go back to the Reaping. Never count him out. V3 zone, Kokichi Oma. I'm taking off. United States Savior tonight is... As I like to end these, uh, end these episodes off right before uh, these events. Inferno! Tonight's the main event, I believe. I don't know. I'm not booking the show. That would be my guess, though. The title is on the line. It will be freaking Saika versus Hoomst in an open challenge for the championship. I'm excited to see who it's going to be, but I guess we're about to find out who will be together. Shall we? We shall. Uh, 
Then we have all sorts of other things. We have the tag team titles on the line, the tables championship, Yuri Sable Championship rather on the line. Um, Rack and Solomon's tag team championships on the line. It's gonna be a good time. Will Francisca Von Karma walk in as tables champion? Will we see Nightmare Before Christmas finally dethrone the Racket of Psalm? I'm unsure. And will Sai could be able to hold on to that title for another event? I'm excited at the very least to find out. And I hope you guys are too. We'll see what Sunday is able to cook tonight. I'm excited, to say the least. Until then, toodaloo, like crew. Thank you. Well, you know what? Let me not thank you yet. Uh, mainly because I kind of want to just, you know, have the perfect ending where I can be like, thank you for watching, and then the song plays, and I think that starts about right now, so, toodaloo flight crew, thank you for watching.